so a very good afternoon and uh, welcome everyone to this uh, class this is uh, lecture number 10 and we are dealing with uh, circuits uh, in this particular lecture if you remember correctly we had dealt with uh, problems on capacitance different types of problem in capacitance where we had capacitor which were initially charged and we had connected it to batteries we had connected it to other capacitors and we had found out how much was the charge coming on the capacitors and how much is the energy lost and blah 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 do we remember this or blah 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 yes, okay now what we were doing up till uh, in that class was we only had one loop or one one circuit that we were dealing with now what is going to happen is uh, we are going to move into multiple circuits now, if there are multiple circuits what are we supposed to do what are we supposed to do are we supposed to do anything different or are we supposed to do the same thing yes what are we supposed to do tell me Huh? You, we are going to do the same thing or we are going to get something else for multiple loops? Huh? Tell me. Same thing or different? Mic is working, no? I guess so. Oh, the mic has also gone. Saying bye-bye. Bye-bye, mic and I'm going. Same thing, sir. Same thing, sir. So that is what we are going to do. The same thing. So let us draw a fictitious group, fictitious loop. And most of the question that you are going to see would be on similar type of loop. So I just drawn a fictitious loop. And remember, this is not the only question because the question can be infinite depending on how many elements I put and how many batteries I put and this and that. So this is the most uh, simple group that I have uh, drawn. Remember, now we come back to the condition where the capacitors are initially uncharged, right? There could be capacitor with a charge in this, but then this picks up, the, the question just becomes uh, a bit more uh, numerical waste, and you will have to spend more time in solving it. Let us just concentrate on uncharged capacitors. So I have E1, this is E2, this is C1, this is C2, and let us say this is C3. Now I have to find out the charge on all the capacitors and I have to find out the, 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 the whatever. Once you know the charge, you know everything. How I'm going to solve a question which has two loops like this. We could have three loops, could have five loops, doesn't matter. Ah, how are we going to solve a question like this? Any idea, anyone? No idea, sir. Get idea, sir. Why are you here, sir? If we have to tell everything to you, sir, why are you here? Huh? Any idea? No idea. Everyone is chilling out. Shall I tell you? Or are you going to help out? No, sir. We can't tell you, sir. We can consider two loops, sir. So, first of all, you have to see how many loops you can make. Anyways, if you look here, uh, this could be your loop number one, the smaller loop. Loop number one, where you can uh, gumo like this. This could be your loop number two, the other smaller loop. You can uh, move around in the loop like this. Or you could have the third loop, which is the complete bada wala loop. How many loops you have? Do you have two loops or do you have three loops? And remember, whenever we're talking about loops, we are talking about independent loops. And as you can see, even though I see three loops here, the number of independent loops are only how much? 
Two. Two. So either I can make equation for one loop and second loop, or I can make equation for first loop and the third loop. I'm just going to do it in that way. I'm going to make the equation for the first and the third loop. Now, how do I go about it? Again, as I told you, I always do things in the same way. So again, I start with the point A and I assume charges in the in the loop. So let us say charge. I'm assuming that charge is flowing like this from this battery. So this plate will get positive charge and this plate will get negative charge. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And let me call the charge as Q1. So this is plus Q1 minus Q1. Now, as soon as this charge Q1, remember the charge flowing is Q1, Q1 reaches this junction. Now you can straight away apply your junction law here rather than increasing the number of variables. So you can apply junction law here. And if you assume that Q2 charge flows like this, how much will be the charge coming in this branch? Q1 charge reached the junction. Q2 moves there. So how much charge comes in the down branch? Q1 minus Q2. Total charge is Q1. This plate will get positive charge and this plate will get negative charge. Yes or no? Do we understand this? So it is going above our head saying bye-bye? Understood, -bye? sir. So charge on this capacitor will be Q2 and charge on this capacitor will be Q1 minus Q2. Now, we have distributed all the charges. How many unknowns are here? How many unknowns are here? The unknowns are only two, Q1 and Q2. So we need two equations. How I'm going to make the two equations? The first equation will be in the pink loop. The other equation would be in the blue loop. Can you tell me what is the equation in the pink loop? Loop number one. VA plus. VA plus. A1 minus. Minus. Q1 by C1. Q1 by C1. Minus Q1. Minus Q2 by C3. By C3. That should be equal to your VA. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This VA, this VA goes. And this is the equation for this loop. Loop number one. What will be the equation for loop number three? I'm not making equation for loop number two. I'll have to start from a different point. It just gets too complicated. I don't make it that way. Just don't get too complicated. One current, one charge is coming positive, one is coming negative. So, yes, what is the equation in loop number three? VA plus E1 minus Q1 by C1. VA plus E1. Minus Q1 by C1. Minus Q2 by C2. Minus, now I have to go in the upper loop. Minus Q2 by C2. Minus E2. Minus E2. Equals to VA. Is equal to VA. So now you have two equations in Q1 and Q2. And with the knowledge of simple maths, you should be able to solve these two equations, get the value of Q1 and Q2, solve the answer, and stay happy. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Everyone understands this? I'm not getting any yes, sir. Do we understand this, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. This is as simple as it gets. Now, once you get the value of Q1 and Q2, you could be asked to find out the potential difference between, let me not make it here, let me make it here. You could be asked to find out the potential difference between A and B. How will you find out the potential difference between A and B? Again, you start the loop from A and finish it at B. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So, can you make the equation from A to B? First of all, you have to get the value of Q1 and Q2, and then you can make this equation in this path from A to B. What is this equation in this path from A to B? 
VA plus E1 minus Q1 by C1 equals to VB. VA plus E1 minus Q1 by C1 is equal to VB. But also remember that potential difference does not depend on path. It does not depend on path. I could have chosen a different path and got the answer C. I could have chosen this yellow path also. Ding, 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 ding. I could have gone like this also. Even if I go in this path also, the answer will remain same. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. If I go in this path, what will be the equation? The yellow path. VA plus Q1 minus Q2 by C3 equals to VB. VA plus Q1 minus Q2 by C3 that will be equal to VB. Trust me, both the questions are same. Both the paths are similar. No matter how you go, you will always end up with the right answer. Do we understand this? Yes or no? No, yes. Yes, sir. Paka? Paka, sir. Okay. Once you get these two equations, solving them is not uh, my part. Solving them is yours. So you should be able to solve them, get the answer, and you can stay happy. Happy, 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 happy. Now, I just gave you an example. There are infinite number of circuits possible. So there could be different, different types of batteries, different, different types of capacitance. It's just a matter of how quickly you can get your answer. Do we understand this, everyone? I'll give you two minutes to note this down. See it once. See the circuit once. And then try to get the equations on your own. If you are just copying it from the board, that means you are not able to, you are not trying to understand it. I'll give you two minutes. Do this. Okay, then. We have noted this down. And then comes this problem that we need to solve. The question is very simple. The initial capacitors, initially capacitors are uncharged. You have to find out the charge on each of the capacitors as shown in the figure. I'll give you two minutes. You can do it on your own, yes or no? Yes, sir. You yes, sir. Minutes. You have two minutes to, 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 to solve this problem, get the answer, and stay happy. I'll give you time. Do it. If you can get into the first shot, nothing like it. Take your time, solve the question. Okay, then let's proceed and see how we are going to solve this. Let me call this point as point A. This will be my pink loop. And the top one will be my blue loop. Let us give the charges here. This will be positive, negative. This will be Q1. Q1 goes from here. On this, it will be plus or minus. This will be Q2. This will be plus or minus. This will be Q1 minus Q2. Everyone understands the charge distribution? Yes or no? Yes, sir. You just have to make the equations, get the answer, and stay happy. Let me call this equation as uh, loop number one. Let me call this loop as loop number two. What is the equation on loop number one? Yes. VA plus 10 minus Q1 minus Q1 minus Q2 by 2 plus 25 equals to VA. Well, good. Well done. VA plus 10 minus Q by 1 minus Q1 minus Q2. Always put it in brackets so that you don't make a mistake. Divided by 2. There is one more battery here. doesn't make any difference. Plus 25. We are moving from the uh, negative terminal to the positive terminal. Is equal to VA. Everyone got this equation. Can I have raised hand that you got this equation? Well done. Who is going to tell me the, the, the second equation from loop 2? VA plus 10 minus Q1 minus Q2 by 2 minus 30 equals to VA. VA minus Q1 by 1 minus q2 by 2 
Oh, I forgot and this 10. So I will write 10 here. I forgot the 10 there. Plus 10 minus 30 is equal to VA. This solves the two equations and we get the value of Q1 and Q2. You can get the value of Q1 and Q2 from here. Yes or no, everyone? Yes, sir. What is the value of Q1? Six. Q1 is six micro coulomb. What is the value of Q2? 52 micro coulomb. 52 micro, you might get negative somewhere, but doesn't matter. We are talking about the chill plate on the positive charge. Do you understand it? It may happen that uh, this Q2, which I suppose is going to come negative. Q2 is 54, sir. Q2, I think, will come, come negative. Is that so? Then minus 54. I don't have 54 as the answer. The answer that I have says um, 52. So I will take minus 52. It will come as minus 52, but that does not make any difference. Answer is 52. Minus only means that positive and negative plates are interchanged. And the charge on the third capacitor will be 58 micro coulombs. Anyone got this answer? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Can I raise hand of how many people got this? One, two, three, four. Okay. Enough for me to move ahead in life. So you understand the concept. It is very simple. And most of the questions that you're going to do or get will be on similar lines, but they may not ask you only the charge. As I told you, uh, they can ask you the 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 what the the, the potential difference. And that is the next question that is going to come, and it is going to come from your favorite book. I hope you have brought it, and you are not concerned about the three liters of milk that the book is going to give you sitting at home. So this is the next question. Some page, question number 25, part four. You don't have to, they have not asked the charge on the capacitors. They have in fact asked the potential difference between A and B. VA minus VB is what you need to calculate. Question number two, I will give you time. Let's see who gets me the answer. You have two minutes to do it. So how are we supposed to do this? I will make two loops. Uh, since point A is already marked, so let me start from point A. You could call any point as A, it doesn't matter. So I will make one loop as this one and one loop as the bigger one. You could always move in the lower loop, doesn't matter. So I will uh, start giving charge. This will be plus, this will be minus. The charge coming on this will be Q1. Q1 will be coming here. In this branch, Q2 will be going. So this will be plus Q2, minus Q2. And then it would be coming like this. In this branch, it would be plus and minus Q1, minus Q2. Your charge distribution could be different. You could have called the charge in the lower middle branch as q2 and the lower branch as q1 minus q2 doesn't make any difference the final answer is going to always come same but this is how i have distributed it i cannot see or say how you have distributed it anyways i will call this loop as loop number one and i will call this loop as loop number two <clears throat> what is the equation in loop number one anyone Start from this point. Hmm. VA plus six. VA plus six. Minus Q1 by four. Minus Q1 by four. Plus VB. Minus <clears throat> Q1 minus Q2 by two. by two. Minus 12. Minus 12. Equals to VA is equal to VA. Why V becomes? Then uh, C or D and E and F, there are infinite number of points that will come. <coughs> <coughs> this is the equation in loop number one. What is the equation in loop number two? What 
VA plus yes. X minus Q1 by 4 minus Q2, Q2 by 1 minus, minus 24 B4. is equal to VA. You should be able to solve these two equations. Remember, our aim is not to get Q1 and Q2. Our aim is to get only the potential drop between this point A and this point B. Now, if I only get, if I only get what? If I only find out the value of Q1, if I only find out the value of Q1, I can go in this green path and find out the value of VA minus VB. If I only find the value of uh, Q2, I can go in this path and find the value of VA minus VB. I don't need to solve for both Q1 and Q2. You can only get one value and that would be good enough to solve this question. Can anyone tell me what is the value of Q1 you are getting from here? No one knows it. So minus 120 by 7. Hmm. This looks okay. Minus 120 by 7. <coughs> if you take this value of Q1, you can find out the value of VA minus VB. So I will go in the green path. <coughs> I will go in the green path. Wrong color. I will go in the green path. <coughs> <coughs> I will go in the green path and find out the value of VA minus VB. Can you tell me the equation in the green path? <coughs> VA plus 6 plus 6. Now remember the charge is negative so I am moving from the negative terminal to the positive terminal so the potential should rise. Do we understand this? Yes sir. So it will become plus 120 by 7 is the charge so multiplied by <coughs> divided by C. That is equal to VB. So my VA minus VB is going to come as I think minus 72 by 7 and that is the correct answer if I remember because 72 by 7 is somewhere around 10.3. Do we understand how this is done? Yes or no? No, yes. How many of you got this answer? <clears throat> now remember your charge distribution could be different. What I'm, I, I, what I'm calling Q1, you may call it as Q2, doesn't matter. I am starting from this point A. You could have started from any point A. Doesn't matter. What matters is the end of the day, you should get up. You understand how to write the equation and you <clears throat> draw your circuit correctly. We understand this, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Shall we move ahead in life? Life has to move on. Yeah. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Move on to the next one. What is the next one? Mm. 
Let us try to apply the same concept. The next thing that we know, and again, I'm making a hypothetical circuit. Again, I'm making a hypothetical circuit because there are infinite number of circuits possible. I cannot make those infinite circuits. This is E1, this is R1, this is R2, this is E2, and this is R3. I hope you know what we, got, what we are supposed to do. Yes or no? Huh? It has gone above what you're saying. Bye-bye, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do you know what we are supposed to do here? Again? This would be point A. This would be ding, 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 ding. Another one would be ping, 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 ping. This would be number one. This would be number two. <clears throat> and similar to what I have done, I will assume that there is a current I1 here. Dang, 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 dang. The current reaches here. Then it becomes pung, 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 pung. In this branch, I2 goes. So what will be the current in the lower branch? Eh? No one knows it. Huh? I1 minus I2. How many unknowns are there? There are only two unknowns. So you need two equations. I'm making one equation in the lower loop, smaller loop, one equation in the upper loop. What is the equation in the lower loop? <clears throat> no one knows it? Huh? VF, VF VF plus E1 plus E1 minus I1 R1 minus R1 R1 eh, lost I1 minus I2 by R into R3, by R3. into R3 take a deep breath open your eyes and only look at the 4% of the universe which is trust me the most beautiful universe in the universe in the multiverse, I1 minus I2 into R3, that should land up with VA. We understand this or this has gone above what you're saying bye-bye? Bye-bye, Ogya -bye. Sarab. Understood, sir. Okay. Loop number two. Mm. VA plus E1 minus I1 R1 minus I2 R2 minus E2 equals to VA. As you can see, there are two unknowns. There are two equations. You should be good enough to solve them. Once you solve them, everything turns out. But again, as I tell you, this might not be the only question that they ask. They might ask you, what is the potential drop, the potential difference between A and B? Once you get the value of anything, you can use any of the tracks. For example, I can use this green track. To find out VA minus VB. What will be the value of VA? How do I get the value of VA minus VB? I don't know, sir. I will not go along this track, sir. I don't like it, sir. Yes? VA plus E1 minus I1 R1 equals to VB. Once you know the value of I1, this should be a cakewalk. I'll give you two minutes. Don't start Xeroxing. Draw the diagram. Do it yourself. That will help you, not the Xerox part. I'll give you two minutes to Xerox it or whatever. Have you want to notice this down? Now comes the time to put uh, whatever we have learned into use. And this is the question that is going to test what we have learned. In the following circuit, something, something is given. E1 is 4 volt, R1 is 2 ohm, E2 is 6 volt, R2 is 2 ohm, and R3 is 4 ohm. What is the value of the current I1? And, and, and zoom in, sir. Two minutes to solve it. Just sir, it sir, can you please zoom it, sir? Can't see it? Yes, sir. Okay. 
let me see if that makes it better Okay, see it this way. Does it look better now? Yes, sir. Okay. You have two minutes to show your talents, else I'll show mine. And that's not good. If a teacher has to show his talents, that means the students are not good enough. And the teacher is worse. So it's my job now to 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 this one to do this one for you. Again. Randomly, let me call this point as A. I1 is already given. Ding, 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 ding. It goes here, I1. In this branch, they've also given I2. So in this branch, it becomes I1 minus I2. Let me write the values here so that I don't make a mistake. This is 4 volt. This is 2 ohms. R2 is 2 ohms. E2 is 6 volts and R3 is 4 ohms. <clears throat> That's it. Uh, I'm going to make my legendary loops. We this is one. We this is the next one. This is loop number one, and uh, this gentleman is loop number two. What is the equation for loop number one, my dear friends? Anyone? Huh? No one. V A plus E one minus I one R one. V A. Are E one? Nay, bowl. Give me the value. Beta. We don't have so much of time. That, you know, you can play around with time. First, I'll call it E one. Then I'll call it four. Don't have that much of time. Yes. Hmm. V A plus five. plus four <clears throat> minus two I one minus two. I1 minus I2 is equal to V. We have to squeeze more things in less time, not less thing in more times. Loop 2. Ah. Nah, no one knows the answer for loop 2. How did you get the answer then? From one equation, you cannot get solved two variables. A plus 4 minus 2i1. Yes. Minus 4i2. Minus 4i2. Plus 6 equals to V. You would be good enough from here to solve the value. They are only asking you the value of i1. And IIT Delhi uh, wins. So this is 1 ampere. I will not go into solving this. That's just waste of my time and yours. Anyone understands this? Yes or no? No, yes. Huh? Yes, sir. How many of you got the answer for this one? Only boys, no girls? At last, boys win. At last. Good. Even boys have, 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 have I mean, talent to win sometimes. They always lose, but sometimes they can also win. Proud of you, one. Proud of everyone. We have fought nicely. And you have uh, won. This is the next question, my dear friends. Coming on your screens. Uh, you are supposed to find out the current in the branch BD. And I will not give you the option. There is no point of giving you the options. You just tell me the current in the branch BD. That is what is required in this question. Current in the branch BD. Current in the branch BD. I forgot on question number. So 
Let's call it question number four. Tonight in the branch BD, you have two minutes to show your talents. So how are we supposed to solve this? Very simple. I will call this point as A. Vai purana durana method I have. I have nothing new. Dung, 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 dung. Uh, this would be my loop number one. This gentleman would be my loop number two. Yes, what is the equation for loop number one? Yeah. PA plus 15. Do you plus 15? I have I have not done the current also yet. Yeah. I want sir I answer five. At last you got five. Good. V <coughs> VA plus 15. I wrong wrong color. I hate wrong colors. VA plus six, 15 minus 6 I1. Minus 3 times I1 minus I2 would be equal to VA. This is the, uh, the loop equation for loop number 1. What is the equation for loop number 2? Wrong. What is the equation for loop number two? Yes. VA plus. VA plus. 15 minus. 15 minus. 6i minus. 6i1 minus. 6i1 minus. 3i2. 3i2. Plus 30. Take a deep breath. Deep. Minus oh. 13. See? Deep breath helps. Is equals to VA. Is equal to VA. From here, you should be able to <clears throat> get the value of I1 and I2. They want the current in the branch of BD. So, you have to find I1 minus I2. Or you could be smart enough. You could call that current as I2 and the other current as I1 minus I2. Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you have to solve for both. Yes, what is the value of I1 you are getting from here? Huh? So I'm not getting anything. Now you don't have to find the value of I1. You can straight away get the value of I2. Yes, what is the value of I1 and I2 are you getting? Zero. I one is zero. Yes, sir. No, it's not possible. Okay, I one is zero. Then I two. I two. Huh? I two five. I two. Well, then ultimately the answer is uh, ultimately the answer is uh, ultimately the answer is uh, five amperes. Do we understand this? Yes or no? No. Yes. It has gone above and it's saying bye bye. Bye bye, sir. I'm going. I had enough of this. Tata. Everyone got this? Yes or no? Huh? Yes, sir. Hmm. So, this was what we call as the nodal theorem. We have applied this nodal theorem in a, in a variety of cases and we have found out, found out what? Found out what? The currents in all these cases. Yes or no? No, yes. Now, at this point, let me let me take this ring ring. This is from one of your last year papers. 21 or 22, I don't know. Year is not mentioned. And you can see the type of question that you are going to face in the exam. These are the type of question that you are going to face in the exam. A single loop problem. We have done, we have done multiple loop problem. So whatever the question is, the question is on the board. E1 is a battery of EMF, EMF 6 volt internal resistance. Internal resistance is just, just the resistance connected to it. So you just connect the resistance and call it 2 ohms, nothing else. And uh, another battery, E2 of EMF, 4 volt and internal resistance, 8 ohm. You have to find the potential difference between the point A and uh, between the point X and Y. I hope you can see X and Y. These are the questions that you 
are going to see in the exam hall, my dear friend. Hmm. See the type of question that you actually see in the examination hall. I'll give you two minutes to show me your talents. Else, I'll have to do the needful. Jokes apart, how I'm supposed to do this? Uh, I draw a resistance here, I draw a resistance here. No matter how you draw the resistance, that is not going to make any much of a difference here. And the simplest question in the entire universe. The simplest question in the entire universe and you cannot do this. Shame on you. Shame on me, first of all. Utter shameful act for me also. It is an utter shameful act. So this is loop number one. And say so no one knows how to do this. I will do it on my own. V A minus six minus two into I one plus four minus eight into I one is equal to V A. No one knows how to make this equation. So sad. I can get the value of I one from here. I1 will be coming as minus 2 uh, by 14. Huh? 14. No, what I'm doing? Minus 2 by 10. Very Is bad with calculation. Yes, beta. Option C. Huh? All of a sudden, you got an answer. Wow. This is the eighth uh, wonder in the universe that we got an answer. Such a difficult question. By God. I was not expecting that anyone would be able to even understand what the question is saying. And we got the answer. Anyways, it is minus 1 by 5. And the answer is still not right. Minus 1 by 5. That means the current is not flowing like this. Current is flowing in the opposite direction. So the current is flowing like this in the opposite direction. That is the actual direction of current. I. I. Now... I start from the point X and end my journey on point Y. Uh, this is the green. Oops, what's happening with these colors? This is the green equation that I'm going to make. What is the green equation? Vx plus 4 plus Because I'm moving opposite to the direction of current, 8 by 5 I into R will be equal to V Y. 8 by 5, I think, I think is 1.6, I think. So the answer is V X minus V Y is minus 5.6 volt. The potential difference across this battery E2 is coming more than the, the 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 emf of the battery and why is that happening why is it coming more than the emf of the battery the emf of this battery is only 4 volt the potential drop is coming much more than that why why is the potential drop coming much more than that and as always we have forgotten and there is no surprise in that. Because the only thing we need to forget is the habit of forgetting. And that is not what only thing we don't forget and we keep forgetting. What we have to forget? Okay, we have to forget the habit of forgetting, but we forget it. Why is the potential drop across this, this battery coming more than the EMF of the battery? Yes? I think so, battery. Battery is? 
Ajim. Ah, see, God exists somewhere in some dimension. He exists. I know. So he peeks in from that dimension. He tells the answer and goes goes back in that dimension again. The four volt battery is getting charged because there is a more powerful battery there, so it is getting charged, and that is why the answer is minus five point six volt. But again, I come back to the original question: Why this question was such a difficult one? You just had to make one equation, and no one could get it correctly, and everyone is looking at each other's faces. Shameful act! It's an utter disgraceful act. And there are no excuses for this act. It's utterly shameful. If I would have been in your place, I would have gone, uh, taken, a, taken two drops of water in my hand, and I would have drawn myself in that two drops of water. That is good enough to draw me if I can't solve a question of this caliber. After doing all those things that we have done, shameful, utterly shameful, utterly, utterly shameful. Shameful beyond comparison. Anyways, I always believe that uh, students are like cash cards. They are like cash vouchers. So you always get a chance to redeem yourself. And the chance of redemption is here now. Similar question. Same attempt. And let's see if you can lift yourself from that deep abyss where you are in. You are on the deepest point on planet Earth right now, very near to the center of uh, Earth. Can you lift yourself to the surface at least? Forget about flying. Can you get yourself on the surface? You are on the deepest point of Marina's Trench right now. Can you come to the surface at least with this question? That is the task. Come to the surface, my dear friends. Don't lie in uh, Marina's Trench. The ecosystem is wonderful, but uh, you will not be able to clear IT from there. Come to the surface. Come to the surface. Come to the surface. Redeem yourself. So how are you supposed to do this? If I just call the resistance here, the resistance of this one is R1. The resistance of this two is R2. Potential drop across the terminals of the first cell. So potential drop across the terminal of the first cell means if I call this point as X and if I call this point as Y, I have to find out. I know that the potential difference across X to Y would be a zero. Now, here, remember. The first first. Yes, beta? We got option for R1 is R2. Remember, no, the answer is two. Remember, you have to do questions quickly enough in the examination hall. Now, you can see both of these batteries. You can see both of these batteries. They are connected in the same way. What do I mean connected in the same way? They are assisting each other. There is only one direction in which current can flow. What is the direction in which current can flow? Current can only flow like this. Yes or no? Sir. You don't have to write Kirchhoff law and this and that. You can straight away write the value of current. What will be the value of current if I call it as I? You don't have to write that loop law from A to A. If there is a single circuit, you can simply do it. What will be the value of I? Even if I apply Kirchhoff's law, I'll get the same answer. What will be the value of IE? It would be both the batteries will get added up, divided by R plus small r1. Plus minus 3A by r1 plus r2 minus r. Patani, I don't know what you are saying. This is the current that you will get. How did, how will you get minus r2? I don't know. I don't know what you have drawn. I don't know what you have understood. Anyway, this is the current that you will get. 3i upon capital R plus small r1 plus small r2. All the three resistances are in series beta. Same current is flowing. How will I get minus? Anyways, that is the current. Now, you can write the potential difference between x and y. Let me move from y. 
and move towards x so i move in this direction just because current is going like this so i write vy minus i into r1 so 3e r1 upon r plus r1 plus r2 then i move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal plus 2 times e is equal to vx now vx minus vy should be zero that means your vx and vy are same so we cancel it out this is the simplest equation in the entire universe you can easily solve it and get the value of capital r in terms of r1 and r2 and the value of capital r that is given in the answer sheet is option number two and that is the answer that you get now take a deep breath deep breath open your eyes very clearly look at the question and tell me what is the doubt i heard someone saying minus r1 plus r2 i don't know how you are getting it no way in the universe you can get in this universe so please take a deep breath take a deep breath probably i have done a mistake that i have given you questions of two loops when the questions that they are going to come are of single loop and you can't do this and you will say oh, 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 oh. i just gave this question so that i can you know i can just tell you what type of questions are coming and you know you will say oh sir how many how simple questions are coming in the exam i was of that view that you will say that the ball has uh, the thing has backfired on me and i now realize that you can't solve question of single circuit anyways it's good that i have that i have realized it it's good that i have given you this question take a deep breath everyone please take a deep breath look at all these two questions i'll give you two minutes If there's any doubt in this universe please solve it here now do not get into some other dimension and hide yourself so i'm giving you two minutes look at the questions see what has been done and how what you are doing it and let me know till then i will prepare the next question for you so without further comments i have present to you this question again this is question from one of the last year papers in one of the attempts and i will, will not talk about the quality of the question i will give this question to you and i hope that you give me an answer for this one what is the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor in the figure is x what is the value of x to the nearest possible integer to the nearest possible integer i give you 2 minutes to give me the answer for this one okay so how are we supposed to do this anyone so 70 the value of x is 70 that is correct how are you supposed to do this it's very simple these two resistances are in parallel do you see this so you can replace them by a single resistor the value of that single resistor will be 100 by 7 yes or no yes sir yes or no yes sir now once you get this value of resistance at 100 by 7 you can find out the total resistance you can find out the current and you can multiply it by 10 that is one way of doing it or you can use that formula that i gave you how does current divide no how does voltage divide in resistors did i tell you that formula i gave you the formula for how does charge divide in series and uh, how does charge divide in parallel combination did i give you that formula way here way back here in resistance sir this is resistance i know i had given you the formula 
of how okay let me now don't let me now don't go let me not go back so far that was capacitor i had given you the formula for capacitor we can write the same formula for resistor how does current and charge current divide in series and parallel for example if you have two resistors which are connected in parallel two resistors which are connected in parallel a current i is coming there this resistor is r1 this resistor is r2 current in this resistor will be r1 current in this resistor will be i2 i1 and i2 now remember i1 plus i2 will be equal to 0 yes or no and i1 into r1 will be equal to i2 into r2 if you solve these two equations simultaneously what you will get you will get i1 will be equal to i into r2 upon r1 plus r2 and you will get i2 as i into r1 upon r1 plus r2 so basically what we understand from here is when the current divides in parallel branch when current divides in parallel branch it divides in inverse ratio current divides in inverse ratio in parallel branches that means the branch which has more resistance will get less current the branch which has less resistance will more will get more current but if you talk about charge if i would replace this by charges I, if i replace resistors by capacitors and current by charge the charge coming on the capacitor is directly proportional to the capacitance do we remember this yes or no Do we remember this? Yes or no? Charge yes, divides in direct ratio of capacitance. Current divides in inverse ratio of resistance. Now, if I apply the same logic on series combination, this is here the current is same and the potential drops are different. If I call this potential drop as V1 and if I call this potential drop as V2, and if I call the total potential drop as V, now remember the potential drop across the capa uh, across the resistors V1 will be equal to V into R1 upon R1 plus R2, and the potential drop across the resistor R2 will be V into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That means voltage divides in the same ratio for resistors. It is exactly inverse of the capacitance. In capacitance, voltage divides in inverse ratio and current divide uh, and charge divides in direct ratio. In resistors, everything becomes reverse. Current in parallel branches will divide in inverse ratio. Voltage in series branch will be dividing in direct ratio of resistance. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Everyone has understood this. Please raise your hands that we understand this. Okay. Now, once you understand this, you can easily say what will be the potential drop across this one. Total potential drop is 170. 170 multiplied by inverse. Uh, it has to be in the direct ratio since it was in the direct ratio, you actually multiplied by 10 resistance divided by total resistance. What is the total resistance? 10 plus 100 by 7. And that is how you get the answer as 70. You don't have to find out the current. You can do it by division of voltages. Do we understand this? How I have done this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, we will end this class here. I hope you will go back home and try as many questions of circuit as they are possible. There are questions given in your book, SCB from wherever you, have, you can find. I will also send you a sheet on electric current. Solve that sheet at home. Can you do that? Yes, sir. I will see you tomorrow.
I'll send the sheet in about an hour or so. I will send it. Solve that sheet. As many questions that you solve, you are going to get better and better. So I'll see you in the next class. Take care and God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir.